It lays the predicate and the foundation for the development of a weather satellite that will permit man to determine the world's cloud layer and ultimately to control the weather. And he who controls the weather will control the world. Groundhog Day in the Planetary Asylum, the unfolding nightmare that you just can't wake up from. Snow in several northwestern U.S. states. Yes, snow. This week, while record-shattering high temperatures wreak havoc throughout much of the U.S. and the world. Apocalyptic hailstorms that just keep getting worse. Welcome to chemical ice nucleation cloud seeding operations. Devastating droughts, often followed by record flash flooding, freak weather, everything. Hurricane-level rains in Florida, one recent example. And that's just the beginning. I'll get to that and much more soon. Stay tuned. And no, it's not nature. All is tainted by what no official source is permitted to acknowledge. Look up. Please, please look up. And all the while, the mainstream media mindless, meaningless mass distraction machine continues with bread and circus for the masses. From earthfm.org. What is geoengineering and how scared should we be? Question mark. Report says, depending on your tolerance for techno-optimism, the notion that we, an intensely fallible species with a catastrophic record of planetary custodianship, their words not mine, though I fully agree with that statement, might deploy untested technologies on a planetary scale could ruin your sleep indefinitely. Again, their words, not mine, but I fully agree. They continue, this technology sounds like the stuff of science fiction, an origin story for the world of Mad Max. For the record, that last line from the report is a gross understatement to a degree that few yet dare to imagine. Yes, it's coming. The report continues, solar geoengineering disadvantages include potential reductions of rainfall, and augmentation of rainfall, which they don't mention, causing crop failure, drought, and thus potentially millions of deaths. They continue, as if that weren't enough, other implications include ozone depletion, upper level ozone layer, existential threat, near term, extremely near term existential threat. In fact, on the current course, we face functional ozone collapse this decade, likely around mid-decade. We're already down to, based on our readings and the NASA former contract engineer that works directly for geoengineeringwatch.org, we're down to about 30% of upper atmospheric ozone remaining. No ozone layer, no life on Earth. Keep that in mind. We're down to 30%. That's why everything feels so hot. Everything you touch feels hot. When you're in direct sunlight, it feels scorchingly hot on your skin. It's killing plankton, killing insects, killing tree foliage, crops. And everyone pretends it's just their imagination. They must be getting older and more sensitive. Not true. Ozone depletion. Sorry for the digression here. I'll continue with this report. Again, earthfm.org. Continued ocean acidification. That's happening at blinding speed. Go to a tide pool and see if you see anything alive. They say impact on plants. Just covered some of that. There's much more. Toxic rain kills soil microbiome and root systems. Next, they state whitening of the sky. Filthy, dirty, white clouds that clearly are not natural, and no one seems to notice. They then finish with this. In addition, there are a lot of other scientific uncertainties that are not yet well understood. In conclusion, they say, the bottom line is that insofar as we understand the potential ecological impacts of projects taking place on such an enormous scale, geoengineering would have, quote, massive negative and unpredictable impacts on the environment, air, land, and sea. Summary. Yes, it would. Yes, it has. And yes, it will continue to. Bet on it. How long can you hold your breath? Let's press on. From the European Leadership Network.org. Unstable systems. Why geoengineering will solve neither climate change nor climate geopolitics. This report states the shift towards normalizing geoengineering is perhaps exacerbated by the fact that while some scientists are warning about the dangers of geoengineering, others are afraid that even critical discussion could inadvertently contribute to its advent. They then say the breakdown of the international order is one of the greatest risks of the human climate crisis. That's happening right now, real time. They say SRM, solar radiation management technologies, would significantly increase existential threats, already has. Unilateral action on geoengineering could be seen as hostile by other nations that subsequently suffer adverse consequences of climate engineering. 
Really? Unilateral climate engineering could, may, might be seen as hostile? Let's translate that. Weather warfare could, may, might be seen as hostile to other nations. And if you think that citizens of any given nation are exempt and not expendable to those that control even their own governments, think again. The European Leadership Report continues. Even more so than resource competition, this, aka climate engineering, weather warfare, could trigger interstate conflict up to war, which under the circumstances of great power competition and climate change would be a threat to humanity's very survival. You mean like right now, with current trajectories indicating that we are perilously close to hitting the wall on so many fronts it would take far more time than I have in this broadcast to even scratch the surface of? Final excerpts from this report. There is strong reason to believe that SRM, solar radiation management, would lead to regionally different outcomes regarding temperature and water. Moderate temperatures in one place would lead to drought elsewhere. The sort of geoengineering that would be good for one state would likely prove harmful for others. The introduction of geoengineering might thereby deepen precisely the same geopolitical tensions that its advocates hoped to circumvent. People who are advocating for climate engineering are either criminally insane or clueless. Take your pick. A final statement from this report. Establishing a strong geoengineering governance regime that requires international consensus for any action is now an imperative and a necessary measure to reduce existential risks. Too late. Far, far too late. We're through the guardrail. From phys.org. Aerosols may affect climate more than previously thought. Why is that no surprise? Because those in the so-called climate science community have been programmed to mask threats. Official agencies like the EPA and others that the public has been programmed to believe are there to disclose threats are actually hiding them. That's how the system works. So it's no surprise when they suddenly, when they can't hide it any longer, say, this may be way worse than we thought. I cover this every single week. From this PHYS report, in the study, researchers investigated the ways in which clouds interact with aerosols. For those that don't know what an aerosol is, a tiny atmospheric particle that stays suspended in the atmosphere. It's core to climate engineering. It's part of what they disperse. Explained here, they say tiny particles in the air from various sources like dust, smoke, or pollution from cars and factories. No mention of climate engineering, of course, which is mathematically, statistically, the single greatest source of highly toxic nanoparticle atmospheric aerosols. This process, known simply as aerosol cloud interaction, has been identified as the forefront of climate science by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the IPCC. For those who don't know who that panel is, largest scientific panel ever created on any subject in human history. And their role has been to downplay the severity of what's unfolding on the planet, of the planet's collapsing life support systems, and certainly to deny climate intervention operations. But they say the high number of aerosols in the atmosphere can lead to more clouds forming, resulting in a cooling effect on Earth's climate. Also, not true. We have other studies that completely overturn this false statement that when you cover the planet with ozone-destroying, hydrological cycle-disrupting, rain-toxifying elements... You are actually warming the planet overall, not cooling. You can create short-term, highly toxic cool-downs at the cost of an even worse overall warming. Chemical ice nucleation is part of that short, toxic surface cool-down equation. I'll get to that shortly, too. The PHYS report then says the aerosol cloud interaction is affected by cloud surface coupling or the ways in which clouds interact with Earth's surface and its atmospheric boundary layer. Traditionally, the report says studies of aerosol cloud interaction haven't considered the connection between cloud surface coupling and aerosol activity. That's like saying you have a science study that hasn't ever considered if a tire in a car works if there's no air in it. That, that's how moronic they're not considering this is. They say cloud surface coupling plays a significant role in aerosol cloud interactions as Earth's surface warms the air above it. The air gets lighter and starts to rise. This process acts as a tunnel connecting the clouds with the land surface. In other words, this updraft will pull those aerosols higher into the atmosphere. When the tunnel is open, and active aerosols can spread to the cloud layers and spread evenly across the boundary layer, resulting in a more consistent cloud formation and stronger cooling effect. 
how many have watched time lapse imagery of the aerosols being dispersed from aircraft? We have these videos at geoengineeringwatch.org. Please search the jet spraying section. And that spreads out and covers the sky like a toxic canopy, filthy, dirty canopy that destroys the ozone layer, disrupts the hydrological cycle, eventually falls to the planet where it contaminates everything. But that's what they're speaking about here while pretending that climate intervention operations aren't ongoing. They then say when clouds are decoupled or when this tunnel from the ground to the clouds updraft is closed, the aerosols can behave in unpredictable ways, leading to varying cloud properties and thus large uncertainties in quantifying the aerosol cloud interaction as reported by the IPCC. Again, the biggest scientific panel ever created on any subject in human history, and they're basically saying in this last statement that they don't have a clue. And yet, they do it anyway. Just like Project Starfish Prime, mentioned that many times in this broadcast, the detonation of hydrogen bombs in the magnetosphere, no idea what the consequences would be, but they did it anyway, because that's the mindset of those in power. Based on psychoanalysis, analysis, they have no comprehension as to the consequences of their actions, even to themselves. It's called a power addiction. They finish with this. The disparity between coupled and decoupled clouds helps explain why climate models and observations often don't align. Let's translate that. The so-called forecast or the scheduled weather is often completely wrong because the script is constantly changing. As I cover the next breaking headline from SciTechDaily.com, remember and consider that climate engineering patented technologies call for atmospheric seeding with numerous forms of nanoparticle elements, aerosols. These elements include aluminum, barium, strontium, manganese, surfactants, polymers, graphene, and more. Again, with all that in mind, here's the new report from SciTechDaily.com. Listen carefully. Troubling consequences. Nanoparticles found to have mysterious effects on unborn children, end quote for the headline. They continue, scientists are studying how nanoparticles, which are omnipresent in our environment and suspected of causing developmental issues in unborn children, interact with the placentia barrier. The research has revealed that these particles can disrupt the communication between the placentia and the fetus, particularly affecting blood vessel formation. The report then says, we absorb these substances from the environment via our food, cosmetics, and the air we breathe, In quote. Look up. Connect the puzzle pieces. Help us to sound the alarm. Here's one more example headline of things that are spreading rapidly. Bad things. From NBC News, deadly fungal infection spreading at an alarming rate. CDC says, they say a drug-resistant and potentially deadly fungus has been spreading rapidly through U.S. healthcare facilities. That's a new government study conclusion. It's not just there. It's in the field. It's countless types of fungal everything. When you fill the atmosphere with tiny particles that serve as fungal proliferation platforms, even if there's nothing else included in this mix that's being dispersed, those particles, those platforms themselves can't not spread many things through the atmosphere. And when they hit the surface, these toxic elements kill beneficial soil microbiome, which also leads to fungal proliferation. Same as when you take antibiotics in the human body, what happens? You become much more susceptible to fungal infection. We're doing this on a planetary scale. Stop and think about that. And now let's consider the 400 plus level four bio labs all over the globe. What are they doing? and who might be using whatever they're inventing. Yes, all of this is indeed profoundly alarming, but we must face it. There is no other way forward in this fight. What else might climate engineering ionosphere heater weapons of mass destruction be involved in? And that's a part of these programs for those that are new to this issue. The saturation of the atmosphere with electrically conductive particulates are manipulated with profoundly powerful ground-based frequency transmission facilities like HARP in Alaska. That's one example. There are many, many more. That's acronym for that is H-A-A-R-P. Look it up, learn about it. Very frightening weapon of mass destruction. And what else might those WMDs be involved in? Let's add this headline. 
This is from phys.org as well. Satellite data reveals electromagnetic anomalies up to 19 days before the 2023 Turkey earthquake. I've been over this in previous broadcasts, but this is a new report confirming these anomalies in regard to the 2011 Fukushima quake. MIT reported, quote, extremely anomalous atmospheric heating directly above the epicenter for days before the quake, which they can't explain. And that's exactly the signature we would expect if an ionosphere heater signal is being bounced off the atmosphere and back down into Earth's strata in a seismically sensitive zone. What happens when you microwave something long enough? It expands. It shifts. It moves. Bad things happen. The report then states earthquakes may betray their impending presence much earlier than previously thought through a variety of anomalies present in the ground, atmosphere, and ionosphere that can be detected using satellites. A recent study in the Journal of Applied Geosciences suggests... They say anomalies in land surface temperatures were observed from the earthquake region in Turkey as early as 12 to 19 days before the earthquakes and anomalies in atmospheric parameters between 5 to 10 days before the earthquakes. These include measurements of water vapor, methane levels, ozone, and carbon monoxide. They say when anomalies in the ionosphere were investigated, including measurements of parameters such as electron density and electron temperature, clear and striking anomalies at 1 to 5 days before the earthquakes were also detected. Let's stop there. Turkey flipped the middle finger to NATO just days before the earthquake. In the case of the Fukushima quake, Japan was beginning to ally with its regional partners before that quake happened, and afterward, they were right back in the Western power structure hip pocket. So, for general consideration, this question, how many weapons of mass destruction are there, tectonic weapons, weather warfare, that the general population has absolutely no idea even exist, and thus the consequences of such weapons can be blamed on nature. Any country or state that steps out of line gets hit by a, quote, natural disaster that isn't. Welcome to the New World. This is Dane Wigington. You're listening to the weekly installment of the commercial-free, non-political global alert news report, The End of the World as We Know It, broadcast brought to you by geoengineeringwatch.org, the largest and most visited website in the world on the subject of covert climate intervention operations, a.k.a. weather warfare. Every week, 462 of them in a row in the case of this broadcast, I make mention of the fact that Geoengineering Watch doesn't do commercials or endorsements for anyone. Have you ever heard a single commercial on any of the hundreds of Geoengineering Watch Star broadcasts? No, because there never has been one, and there never will be. I endorse one mission alone, exposing and halting the single greatest assault ever launched against the planet's life support systems, the web of life, and human health, global climate disruption operations. We have paid for all of our broadcasts stations across the country for many years out of pocket because I will not muddy this message with any other promotion of anything other than exposing and halting climate engineering, period. Please march with geoengineeringwatch.org in this most dire last hour effort to sound the alarm and this effort will take all of us. Reaching a critical mass of awareness is the only way forward in this fight. We can, we must reach a critical mass by starting a conversation on the climate engineering issue that leads people to a credible source of data. Geoengineeringwatch.org will continue all of our efforts to be the go-to source on covert climate engineering operations. A conversation on climate engineering can easily be started with Geoengineering Watch awareness raising materials available on our homepage. If we can fully expose weather warfare, so many other truths would be forced to the full light of day with it. Moving on, back to the wider horizon, the one that's getting darker by the day. From Reuters.com, fires in Brazilian wetlands surge 980%. That's nearly a tenfold increase. Think about that. They say extreme drought expected. Obviously, it's already there. Fires in Brazil's Portinol wetlands have surged nearly tenfold so far this year. That's just one example. Let's keep going. From AccuWeather, South Florida, underwater. Too much water. Tropical rainstorm delivers 20 inches of rain in 24 hours. They say, and the heavy rain shows no signs of letting up. This is as of Thursday night last week. The heaviest of the thunderstorms are likely to continue to produce rainfall rates of 3 to 5 inches per hour. Think about that. And think about this. If you believe that those in power with massive militaries, air forces, can't control the spigot, jog your memory. Remember the Chinese Olympics when they said, don't worry about rain, it won't rain. You have private companies that guarantee 
that your wedding or event will not have rain because rain is easily dispersed by climate intervention operations. If you think that they don't have the power to turn this spigot on and off wherever they choose, you have not done your research. Let's keep going. A lot of these puzzle pieces connect. From Forbes.com, record Florida rainfall could cost over $1 billion in damages, report says. A state of emergency has been declared by Governor Ron DeSantis. This is only the beginning. Wait for the coming weeks and months. From the Miami Herald, remember they said Miami would be underwater? Question mark. Here's a preview of our future. Preview happening now, of course. Miami is underwater, and that's going to be coming from many directions soon. Sea levels are rising rapidly, and no sea level rise is not uniform across the world. Seafloor topography plays a part in that. Thermal expansion plays a part in that. There's many variables. So many people have opinions about things they know nothing about. That needs to change. Or at least before you form an opinion, do some research. Also from AccuWeather, multiple tropical threats possible, including in Gulf of Mexico after Florida tropical rainstorm. They say Florida had been sweltering in excessive heat and struggling with abnormally dry to drought conditions prior to the arrival of the tropical rainstorm Tuesday of this week. This will be like a wall of water coming at southern and central Florida into Thursday, the report says. That's from AccuWeather Chief Meteorologist Bernie Reno. Perhaps he needs a copy or a link to the dimming documentary. What do you think? By the way, the dimming is up to 15 million views plus in spite of drastic draconian social media censorship people are waking up the report then says total rainfall in parts of southwestern florida will range between 18 and 24 inches with accuweather local storm max of 30 inches reported in some areas apparently which is on par with a major slow moving tropical storm or hurricane how do they know these events are going to occur in the way they do and when they do let's go back to hurricane harvey they knew a week beforehand that that storm would go where it went and stay there for days. How did they know that? If you want to find out how they knew, search geoengineeringwatch.org, Hurricane Harvey, examine the recordings of the frequency transmissions that steered and held that storm in place, inarguable data. Then search geoengineeringwatch.org hurricanes and look at all of our reports on the manipulation of hurricanes, which by the way, for the record, I've stated so many times, the US military began their hurricane manipulation program in 1947 with Project Cirrus. How far do you think they've come with this technology since then? Let's add this recent report from the FloridaPhoenix.com. Governor DeSantis signs bill erasing the term climate change from state law. The report says the legislation deletes more than 50 lines of previous state statutes dealing with climate change. Well, that's interesting, isn't it? Did Mr. DeSantis step out of line? I certainly don't agree with what he did. We've been horrible stewards of the planet. Where would you begin to even cover that subject? We've cut down the forest. We're burning 100 million barrels of hydrocarbon a day. We're poisoning the oceans. We're burning 260,000 tons of coal a day, something in that range. Where would I begin? But... Does One, does DeSantis ever mention climate engineering? For those who think he's some sort of champion of, of big business, when the planet fails, big business fails. How about that point to ponder? Game over. Society collapses. And, and this notion that deregulating everything so you can loot, plunder, pillage, and pollute until there's nothing left is a death sentence, period. But the bottom line is this, for DeSantis or anybody else, There's no legitimate discussion about climate anything from any perspective without first and foremost addressing climate intervention operations. Keep that in mind. From phys.org, another. Climate misinformation overshadows record floods worldwide. Here's their attempt to cover up what's happening in our skies. They say climate skeptics are scapegoating a weather modification technique known as cloud seeding. Let's stop right there. That's how the other side of the fence has been programmed. That if you mention climate engineering, somehow you're denying all other forms of human damage to the planet. Did I deny that? Have I ever denied that ever once? Though people quote me as denying it, I never have and I never will. It's completely irrational to deny the fact that we have been horrible stewards of this planet. We've obliterated it in the geologic blink of an eye. But this is what the power structure is trying to do, to program the environmental left into believing that anyone who mentions climate engineering 
is denying all other forms of damage, and that could not be further from the truth. What we are saying at geoengineeringwatch.org is, again, no legitimate discussion about climate anything without addressing climate engineering first, and the denial of climate engineering from so-called environmental groups is absolutely criminal. They don't deserve a penny of your money unless or until they address this issue first and foremost. Anything less is to arrange deck chairs on the planetary Titanic on which we are all passengers. They say climate skeptics are scapegoating a weather modification technique known as cloud seeding to deny the role of global warming in historic floods that have recently devastated countries from Brazil to Kenya. They say scientists say the technique cannot create weather, nor can it trigger rainfall at the scale observed in countries such as Germany and the United States. That is so patently untrue. Historical record Project Popeye in the 60s that deluged Vietnam so effectively that by the 70s, international treaties, environmental modification treaties were passed forbidding weather warfare, not that anybody adheres to those treaties, and they're saying now we don't have that technology? People need to learn their history. They need to do a little research so they can see through the smoke and mirrors of total deception coming from the power structure controlled weapon of mass deception in the media. Let's take a slight detour for a moment to cover a few directly related footnotes, important puzzle pieces as well. From Politico.com, soaring insurance rates, an existential challenge to affordable housing. The report says as premiums rise, developers can't afford property coverage due to rent caps. They say it's absolutely becoming unsustainable. On that word unsustainable, keep in mind that that word describes the entirety of industrialized, militarized, so-called civilization, completely and totally unsustainable. And we're about to find out the hard way how true that is. With that in mind, let's add this puzzle piece from Yahoo News. Report estimates climate change will cost children born today as much as $1 million through a combination of cost of living increases and reduced earnings. They say, according to Consumer Reports, the study found that if humanity does not act swiftly to limit it, climate change will cost a typical child born in 2024 at least around 500000 over the course of their lifetime and possibly as much as $1 million through a combination of cost of living increases and reduced earnings in quote. According to the report, the largest increase in cost will be housing. Let's put this one to rest. None of this is true. Children born today won't make it anywhere near that far. None of us will. In fact, we are on an unimaginably short timeline if we remain in the current course. And at best, we can preserve enough of the planet's life support systems that some might make it through what's coming. Yes, that's how bad it is, and I know no one wants to hear that. And because no one wants to hear that, that's why we're in the dark corner we're now in. Every single so-called environmental documentary that paints a bit of a bleak picture then ends with, but don't worry, buy some solar panels and a Prius and we'll all live happily ever after. Good luck with that. And I'm so completely aware that so many people, when they hear that or they hear me say it, decide they don't want to hear anymore. That if they can't be guaranteed a happy ending, they don't want to even know what the truth is. And that attitude, that programmed mentality needs to be altered. To be clear, every single individual that our collective efforts help to awaken to the unvarnished truth and help to provide the courage in facing that truth matters in and of itself. Every single individual matters in ways that we can't yet fully know or understand, but it matters, and our effort to move this fight forward matters. We can't yet know what allies we may have in this epic battle, this epic struggle for life on earth, but no matter what the case, doing what is right will always be right. Life is a seasonal occupation. It gives no guarantees, except one. Our will and the correct use of it is completely and totally in our power. It cannot be taken. Remember that. I'll get back to the climate engineering deluge drought scenarios in a moment, but first, one more important puzzle piece related to the thinning of the herd from Politico.com. Dengue fever surges in Europe thanks to, they say, climate change. They continue, invasive mosquitoes are spreading into previously unaffected areas. Here's a question. How many tens of millions or more GMO mosquitoes have been let loose all over the world? What was the true agenda or objective for that? For a shocking to the core dose of the biowarfare world, take the time to read Lab 257, the disturbing story of the government's secret Plum Island germ laboratory. And about 
all those atmospheric nanoparticles, they can and do act as desiccants when interacting with an ionosphere heater induced high pressure heat dome. And we hear that term heat dome now all the time, don't we? Because it's such a constant part of this equation with ionosphere heaters all over the globe interacting with other networks of frequency transmitters, the NEXRAD network and others still. The atmosphere is being used as a battle zone and an experimental physics lab, and we will all pay the price very, very soon if it's allowed to continue. From multiple sources, Texas farmers face mounting expenses as drought worsens. Reports as rising temperatures, intensify drought, and increased costs for the heavily subsidized crop insurance program. The financial cost of drought in Texas has risen rapidly over recent decades, according to a new analysis of federal crop insurance data. The nonprofit Environmental Working Group, a longtime critic of the federal crop insurance program based in Washington, analyzed data from U.S. Department of Agriculture and showed that drought accounts for more crop insurance payouts than any other weather phenomenon and that Texas draws more crop insurance payouts than any other state. Payouts due to drought in Texas rose from an average of $251 million per year in the 2000s to $516 million in the 2010s and $1.1 billion per year in the first four years of the 2020s. The data showed rising at more than twice the rate of inflation. Is that why so many farmers are not willing to talk about climate engineering because they would lose their subsidies while the carbon fuel industry is also subsidized? When you print money, when you can print as much as you want for anything you want, military or any other corporate criminal anything, you can game the board for a long time until the planet's life support systems collapse. And that's the phase we're in now. From CNN.com, thousands of dead fish pile up on dried out lagoon and drought hit Mexico. You can shut the water off anywhere you want when you control the skies. So they say some form of drought is afflicting nearly 90% of Mexico. Livestock, including cows and donkeys, have also perished as dams run low and farmers struggle to secure water. Climate collapse refugees now all over the world. It's going to get worse. From IdahoCapitalism.com, Idaho farmers say water curtailment order will dry up land to push them out of business. The report says the Idaho Department of Water Resources said curtailment or shutting off the water is necessary because of a predicted water shortfall this year. Throw some more insurance money at them and perhaps they won't acknowledge climate engineering either. On Wednesday of this week, after dark, in a northern California forest on the east side of Lake Shasta where I live, it was 95 degrees again after dark, with 15% humidity. On Thursday of this week, Weather Nation and other scheduled weather climate engineering cover-up agencies like the Weather Channel announced that snow would be falling in Washington State, Idaho, Wyoming, and Montana, with up to a foot of snow scheduled for Montana, which had a winter storm warning. Think about that. 95 degrees after dark, Northern California, in the forest, next to a massive lake, and then it's going to snow. Well, we have 100 and 10 to 115 degrees in parts of the southwest, warm temperatures much farther north, but suddenly snow comes into part of the U.S. It's called chemical ice nucleation for weather modification. Please search the engineering winter section on the homepage of geoengineeringwatch.org. And every single one of these chemical cool downs, chemical ice nucleating cloud seeding for weather modification comes at the cost of a worsened overall warming. You don't get something for nothing, and they're contaminating the entire planet in the process. Back to the heat from the Times of India. India's heat waves are getting warmer, more unbearable. May 2024, the report says, was the warmest May ever, and the last 12 consecutive months went over this in previous broadcasts. June 2023 to May 2024 have broken temperature records for each successive corresponding month, according to the European Climate Agency, Copernicus. Every month warmer than the last. Ocean temperatures have been record-breaking every single day for over a year and a half now. Ocean temperatures off Florida, 102 degrees last year, killed everything. It's going to be worse this year. The temperatures are already far ahead of where they were this time last year. We've had 560-something months in a row of above-normal global temperatures, that many in a row. Climate disruption operations making all of it far worse, not better. And I still hear the narrative of, quote, coming ice age, global cooling. What planet are these people on? Because it's not this one. And that narrative simply alienates a huge part of the demographic that we need to have in this battle. Those that know the environment is damaged and that we need to help expose climate engineering. When you deny that damage to the environment, we lose that demographic. How is that helping in our battle? Answer, it isn't. 
From ArabiaWeather.com, the city of Aswan recorded an absolute record and historic temperature of 50.9 degrees Celsius. That's about 124 degrees, and that doesn't take humidity into account, which means it doesn't take the heat index into account, which could be 20-plus degrees higher than that. From the UK Guardian, Acropolis closed during hottest hours in Greece's earliest heat wave on record. Temperatures expected to reach 43C in Athens, 110, 12, and across the country prompting school closures and health warnings. From AccuWeather, tourists missing on Greek islands as heat wave grips country. From the Las Vegas Review Journal, first third of June 2024 was the hottest in Las Vegas history. Overnight lows will be around 80 degrees, a temperature that limits overnight cooling, 80 plus degrees. They should tell the full truth. Another from AccuWeather, dangerous heat wave looms for over 110 million people next week from Chicago to Philadelphia. The first widespread heat wave of the year is about to unfold over the eastern and central United States with AccuWeather real field temperatures occasionally approaching the 100 degree mark. They'll be over that. Forecasters are concerned that the high pressure responsible for the heat could strengthen and expand, which would put almost 150 million people at risk of dangerous heat next week. Let's add this from futurism.com. Heat waves that could kill tens of thousands of people at once. From that report, we could have the Hurricane Katrina of extreme heat on our hands. A dying planet with toxic engineered skies doesn't bode well for the fate of the human race or life on Earth. You're listening to the weekly installment of Global Alert News, the Bad News Broadcast, installment number 462, June 15th, 2024. This is Dane Wigington, your host. Global Alert News is brought to you by geoengineeringwatch.org, the largest and most visited website in the world and the subject of covert climate intervention operations known as geoengineering. Let's call it what it is, climate disruption operations, climate destroying operations. Recordings of the commercial-free non-political Global Alert News Hour can be found on the homepage of geoengineeringwatch.org under the recent column and on the Dane Wigington YouTube channel. I wish to thank all those that have helped us to move this fight forward, to give us a voice, to expand our reach in this desperate last hour effort to sound the alarm. This is a team effort. All of us spokes in the wheel, all of us necessary and needed to make it roll. If you're on our email list, please put us on your email contact book so that our mail outs don't go to the spam file. Please help us to share the groundbreaking documentary, The Dimming, which fully exposes the climate engineering atrocities now with over 15 million views on YouTube. The best way to share is by circulating the direct link to the dimming by email directly from the homepage of geoengineeringwatch.org. Sharing directly helps us to overcome social media censorship, and they are desperately trying to censor that film. When viewing our YouTube of the dimming or Global Alert News or any other Geoengineering Watch video on YouTube, please subscribe, share, and comment, all of which helps us to circulate critically important data to a much wider audience. About reaching those that aren't looking up, here's one way. By starting the conversation with Geoengineering Watch awareness raising materials, which can be found on our homepage, our only goal to provide activists what they need to move this fight forward. Our printed materials, extremely high quality printed materials, shocking images, we make those available for less than our total cost of producing and shipping. Our only goal, my only goal, to bring this issue to light while there's still something left to salvage. We have Geoengineering Watch hoodies and shirts, new shirts. We have white shirts as well that will be on our website soon. We're going to completely redo that site to make it easier to deal with as soon as we can. In the meantime, we appreciate your patience. We're doing our best. We're completely overworked, working seven days a week, but we're doing our best to move this fight forward. All of these materials are available on our homepage. We have scannable business cards, bumper stickers, all effective tools to help strike up a conversation on the climate engineering issue. Again, reaching a critical mass of awareness on this issue is the great imperative of our time. If we can expose it, we have a chance of stopping it from the inside out. If you're willing to share a picture of yourself with a Geoengineering Watch t-shirt or hoodie, ideally in some sort of crowded location, please send your photo to us so that we can post it as part of our activist compilation, which is now part of our materials page. The images encourage others to make their voices heard in this all-important battle to sound the alarm. My deepest thanks to all those that are steadfastly committed to this must-win fight. We're all in different scenarios and situations, but as long as we are doing all we can, we are critical components of this wheel that we must turn, that we must move forward if we're to have any chance of salvaging anything on this planet. It's our collective efforts that can still make a difference at this late hour. Pressing on from sciencehub.com, what is a heat dome and are they getting worse with climate change? Question mark. They're getting worse all right, but the true reason 
is not disclosed. They continue, a heat dome is not a clearly defined scientific term, but is used by many weather forecasters. It's used all the time now. The American Meteorological Society defines it as an exceptionally hot air mass that develops when high pressure aloft prevents warm air from rising, as I described earlier. Ionosphere heater, this is not disputed technology, transmits, in the case of HARP, 3.5, 3.6 million watts of power, to the electrically charged ionosphere, causing an electrical chain reaction. This heats the atmosphere to drastically high temperatures, shockingly high temperatures, which expands it up and down. The downward push forms a high pressure heat dome, which they can then use to steer upper level wind currents, AKA the jet stream, and thus precipitation wherever they want. This report from Science Hub then states, the jet streams are fast flowing bands of wind, they're alluding to what I just stated, in the upper atmosphere that usually help move weather systems along the surface, but sometimes big loops form in the jet stream, aka high pressure heat dome, resulting in weather systems getting stuck in the loop. Drought deluge scenarios, we've talked about that so many times in this broadcast and every other one. These blocking patterns, as they are known, can lead to extreme cold, extreme rain, extreme heat, in the case of heat domes. They can last anywhere from days to weeks, as long as they want them to last is how long they last. There is also some evidence that the intensity of heat domes is outpacing the warming trend. Why would that be? Because they're not natural. They're not part of any natural cyclical anything. Suggesting that warming is amplifying their intensity. The intensity of hot extremes associated with heat dome-like atmospheric circulations increases faster than background global warming in both historical change and future projections. They simply tried to cover the tracks of the climate engineers, and this train of weather disruption operations is so radically and totally off the tracks, they have no real control at this point. They're chasing a ball downhill, doubling down on their insanity in so many levels. We are now in completely and totally uncharted territory. Next headline, same theme, this from Smithsonian. The western U.S. is sweltering under a heat dome. What does that mean? Again, question mark. They say a stagnant high pressure system over the region is trapping heat, exacerbating high temperatures, and setting records. That's until the chemically nucleated storm front was manipulated into the Pacific Northwest, creating snow after this. Think about how absurd this all is. And people don't question this. They think this is nature, some natural cyclical pattern. This is as natural, again, as example I've given many times of running someone over in a crosswalk and trying to claim they died of a heart attack before you hit them. You're not going to make that argument in court. There's nothing natural about weather, anything at this point, period. Nothing. Whole system, globally, totally disrupted. The Smithsonian report then says, this phenomenon occurs when a high pressure system stays in the same place for days or weeks, trapping hot air beneath it like a lid on a pot. Alex... Lemurs, a meteorologist for the National Weather Service, has a federal gag order on them, by the way, tells National Public Radio, quote, it's a similar concept here. You get a big high pressure system in the upper parts of the atmosphere, and it allows that heat to build underneath over multiple days, end quote. I think Mr. Lemurs should have a link to the dimming also. What do you think? Any of these people, all of these people that refuse to discuss climate engineering to protect their paychecks and pensions should be held legally and morally accountable. Should they not? You decide. From Fox News, round two of life-threatening heat menaces West with millions under excessive heat warnings. The West already facing a second potentially deadly heat threat in a matter of weeks. Excessive heat warnings are in place for more than 9 million people across California's Central Valley and the Southwest. We know it's coming. It's scheduled right now for the eastern, northeastern U.S. In fact, the, the current NOAA scheduled weather departure from normal temperature map shows up to a 30 degree above normal surface temperature below a massive high pressure heat dome there. At least that's what's scheduled. Of course, when you can manipulate the climate, the schedule can always be changed. The script can always be changed. And by the way, the local meteorologists are definitely reading scripts. Lockheed Martin and Raytheon do all the weather modeling for the National Weather Service and NOAA, National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, the nation's weathermen. Why would we need private defense contractors to do the modeling for the nation's weathermen? Because those private defense contractors are neck deep in climate engineering operations and patents. So they have to pass the script down. That's how it works. Next, from the UK Guardian, 
It's unbearable. In ever hotter U.S. cities, air conditioning is no longer enough. From the report, record-breaking temperatures in the last few years shatter the myth that air conditioning alone will keep people safe. If anybody believed that myth, they need to wake up and, and consider reality. Conventional wisdom, the report says, and public policy have long operated on the assumption that no matter how bad the heat gets, air conditioning will be enough to keep people safe. But the last few years of record-breaking temperatures are shattering that myth. People in the street, are they safe? Or people in second and third world countries, are they safe? And who could think that when you're using that much power and grids are shutting down, and who could possibly buy into this complete fantasy that air conditioners can save us from Venus syndrome on planet Earth? It's absolutely moronic. Climate engineering, again, the attempt to temporarily and toxically mask some of the heating Trapping more heat than it deflects overall, destroying the ozone layer, destroying forests, plankton. The list goes on and on. They are pounding the nails into our collective coffins by the day. From Watchers News, historic floods, tenfold increase in wildfires, and now a potential extreme drought make triple suffering for Brazil. Brazil's being hammered. Amazon forest is completely collapsing. Question. Is Brazil paying the price of being a core part of the BRIC country's backing of trade that no longer uses U.S. dollars? You decide. Not denying Brazil's cutting down of their own forest. That's suicidal. But there's much more to the equation. And the toppling of countries by countless covert means has been business as usual for Western powers for so many decades. Please investigate. From Euronews.com, fires, floods, and heat waves plague Europe as extreme weather persists. Perhaps more uncooperative countries and citizens. And keep in mind, as the planet's life support systems fail, and they are, populations everywhere are rapidly becoming a liability to those in power. Not just expendable, but a liability. Again, for the record, I'm absolutely not denying the endless list of anthropogenic activity that is decimating the planet. What I am pointing out is that global climate engineering operations have long since completely derailed and disrupted all natural weather patterns or the planet's attempt to respond to the damage done from other sources. The Global Climate Engineering Manhattan Project isn't benevolent. It's about power and control. From the UK Daily Mail, why is Britain so cold in June? Question mark. Temperatures this month are half the level of 2023 and it won't get much warmer anytime soon. The Meteorological Office warns. They say Brits have been battered with cold wind and rain so far in June, with temperatures around 3 to 5 degrees below average for this time of year. They're talking about C, which is about double that in, in Fahrenheit. The Met Office has revealed that temperatures are half what they were a year ago, which marked the hottest June on record. So they went from the hottest June on record to perhaps the coldest on record. That's climate engineering. Those types of fluctuations are part of the consequences and or objectives of climate engineering. And for many of the Brits, just like populations in other chemically cooled regions of the planet, those populations suddenly can't believe that it could be warm anywhere else because it's cold, chemically cold, outside their doorstep. And that's part of the psychological aspect of climate engineering. Keep the population confused and divided as to the true state of planetary meltdown until the moment of impact. From AccuWeather, Australian Airlines plane badly damaged by hailstorm during flight. Take a look at the pictures of this aircraft. It looks like it's been hit with anti-aircraft cannons. Again, welcome to chemical ice nucleation cloud seeding. From EcoWatch.com, solar project planned for Mojave Desert will destroy thousands of Joshua trees and endangered tortoise habitat. The Clean Energy Project, the report says, which is expected to power 180,000 homes. That's nonsense. With power that's estimated to be for wealthy residents along the coast, Los Angeles Times reported. Yeah, ripping out forests to install limited lifespan solar panels. That's going to save us from ourselves. Right. More on the same subject, also from ecowatch.com. Increasing renewable energy use in the U.S. brings billions in benefits, study finds. These people are just paid for by those who want to keep the wheels turning again till the moment of impact. And the article headline image is of a massive solar farm with jet sprayed skies, filthy looking skies. And that's what got me into this issue for those that don't know. My home is on the cover of the world's largest renewable energy magazine. I have wind, hydro, and solar. And I was losing massive amounts of my solar power uptake from whatever these aircraft were emitting, which I knew absolutely positively could not be condensation. I was losing 60, 70, 80% of my PV uptake, not 60, 70, 80% of visible light. That's a different subject. 
but you can't block direct sunlight if you want a solar panel to work. So how absurd is it for the so-called green community be, to be pushing solar panels on an unimaginable scale while blotting out the sun with solar radiation management? We live in a full-blown planetary asylum and almost no one is willing to tell the truth or acknowledge it. Next, from interestingengineering.com, China opens world's biggest solar farm with 6.9 billion kilowatt annual capacity. You have to see this to believe it. It's literally a whole small mountain range covered with solar panels. It looks like something from a science fiction movie. We are a snake eating its own tail, the human race is, and the ship is going down fast. From cleantechnical.com, data centers and AI are sucking up huge amounts of renewable energy. You mentioned electric cars, and some people, the report says, will go off on a tirade about how there's not enough electricity to charge them all, and if they happen to be charging at some at the same time, the electrical grid will implode as transmission wires melt and transformers self-destruct in a shower of sparks. There is some truth to those concerns, the report says, but tens of millions of electrical cars are going to need a lot of electrons to keep their batteries charged. What most people are blissfully unaware of is that the data centers and AI are likely to consume half of all the electricity available from renewable energy resources, such as solar and wind farms. The grid is under threat. The whole paradigm, electric cars, all the AI, everything, completely and totally unsustainable. If you can't see it coming, you need to wipe the lens through which you're seeing the world clean. Do some objective research, please, while it can still make a difference. In regard to so-called renewable energy that isn't, you can start with the documentary film called Planet of the Humans, an expose of what you're not told about that industry. And am I advocating for carbon-based fuels instead? Absolutely not. What I'm saying is this, that societies that have built their very existence from extraction, from grinding up nature in every imaginable way to sustain themselves obviously cannot be maintained. And we're again about to find that out the hard way. Here's one more moronic report from ecowatch.com. Improved refrigeration could reduce global food waste by 41%. Yes, and if, if the proverbial pigs had wings, they could fly as well. So we just went over the air conditioning is not keeping up. Obviously, it's shutting down grids. We can't maintain any of that. So we're going to magically build massive refrigeration everywhere and power it with what? Just went over all that. And somehow that's going to save food that you have to distribute then with more carbon fuel. So many statements from so many sources that even pretend to be green. Completely and totally moronic. Let's add this from CNBC. World likely to blast beyond grim warning milestone in the next five years, UN Weather Agency warns. They say we're playing Russian roulette with our planet. Let's stop there. We, we blew past the barrier about two decades ago. The planet we've known is done. It's gone. It's not coming back. All you have to do is walk through the now silent forest, and I live in the middle of one, to know just how bad things are. What would a world be like without trees? We'll never know, because we would be long gone. No trees, no people. When I was in kindergarten, the teachers would always need to coax me from the playground trees after recess because I would scale their branches and there I wanted to remain. I felt so very at home there, held aloft in the arms of my silent, sentient companions, the trees. My love for trees grew ever stronger throughout my life. To bear witness to their demise all over the world pains me to the marrow. For a first-hand look at the accelerating forest die-off, search and view this geoengineering watch video report title. Domino effect, weather warfare, wasted forests, and worldwide collapse of ecosystems. In my study of Stoic philosophy since age 14, I forced myself to remember foundational rules for living, for life, that I must always consider what is in my control and what isn't. If I expend my life energy on what isn't in my control, I'll become ineffective at what is. This I will not allow to occur. Nearly 2,000 years ago, the Stoic philosopher Epictetus said this in regard to the core principles just mentioned. Why may not he who discerns these things live with an easy and light heart, awaiting whatever may happen and bearing what has happened? Wherever I go, it will be well with me there, for it was well with me here, not on account of the place, but of the principles which I will carry away with me, for no one can deprive me of these. On the contrary, they alone are my property, and cannot be taken away. Their possession suffices me, wherever I go, and whatever I do.
End quote. From Epictetus nearly 2,000 years ago, biblical scriptures and many of the great spiritual traditions throughout the ages teach the same. Our principles, our values, our virtue, our honor, our morality, this is what has been entrusted to each of us to protect by our maker at any cost. If we are not here to play our part in protecting and preserving creation for our posterity, for the web of life on which all of our lives completely depend, then why are we here? Sadly, for far too many, the pinnacle of their existence, of their purpose, seems to be the personal pursuit of pleasure, which the power structure has programmed into populations from birth, by design. That paradigm must be shattered or we have no chance. Now is when we each must decide why we are here at this most critical moment in the most critical crossroad of life on earth. All are desperately needed in the battle to turn the tide. We must prioritize the biggest hole in the bottom of the boat, the greatest and most immediate threat we collective face short of nuclear cataclysm. That threat is raging in the skies above. Climate disruption operations, aka geoengineering, aka weather and biological warfare. Sharing credible data from a credible source is the key to moving this fight forward. Every single day counts in this battle. Time is not on our side. Check the activist suggestions link on the homepage of geoengineeringwatch.org for specific instructions on how you can make your voice heard. Until next week, this is Dane Wigington from geoengineeringwatch.org.